Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to break down my Ghost Dance beer advert, uh, the editing process behind how I created the advert. It's going to be a long one, so uh, maybe get yourself a beer or a, a coffee, put your feet up, and um, maybe you'll learn something from how I created the advert. So I've cracked open my beer. Let's now remind ourselves of the advert we just created, and uh, yeah. Let's play it. Join the dance. Release the fire inside. Under the moon and stars, feel the flow in your veins. The ghost that shall reunite the living and the dead to bring peace, prosperity, and unity to Chinookan tribes. Uh. the advert it was it got a lot of good feedback and a lot of you have now subscribed to the channel from this advert so thank you right i've had some requests about certain scenes so i think best thing we do is we just go through it bit by bit and break it down nothing really happens on this first scene all that is happening is i'm just kind of telling the story setting it up for what is about to happen uh there was a few sound effects from epidemic for the keyboard tapping that's when the music starts to kick in. And I know I've, I've had a comment saying, this is not indian -y Native American music. And I, I know it isn't, but I couldn't find anything on Epidemic that was. So please forgive me for choosing African music. To me, it suited the style good enough to get by for Indian style. But yeah, let's continue. So then the can kind of calls out, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is when we start this transition. So the first part I want to go through is how I went from this transition, from this image into boom, boom, there. So there, that is where it happens. Basically, that next shot there, where it's all colorful and it hasn't got the highlight like you're seeing down the, the center of the can, that is actually a photograph of the can. So all I did was I tried to rotate the photograph to match where the next frame of the video would be as if it was continuing. And that is how you do that. And that then automatically starts into the kind of the animation part, which as I've explained was done through Photoshop layers just a lot of uh, a lot of warping of the um, not warping liquefying of the fire and the river and a lot of painful keyframes. So let's go through a bit more into this scene. I'm not sure if I can show. Can I show? Let's have a look. If we expand these keyframes, so you can see them a lot more. You can see here what's going on. So. The main keyframe I use, the, well, keyframe, the main effect I use for all my transitions is called transform. I'm not sure what um, Final Cut would call this or DaVinci, but in Premiere, it's basically for me, it's a cheating way of kind of quick panning or something because you can add motion blur. Down here, you've got something called shutter angle. And if you turn that to a degree of your liking, I find 180 is pretty good. Uh, you can go more and it creates more of a kind of a trail of blur, but 180 seems to be good. And then if your keyframes are close enough together within the transform, they create motion blur when shutter angle is turned on. So as you can see, let's just go through it frame by frame. There's already blur on the screen because I'm going from, where is it? My position, you watch those, quickly going into the fire dancers. And then that is a mixture of, I mean, what is that one? That is Bezio. That's going from a 
linear to a bezier because I wanted it to, once it got to the fire, I didn't want it just to stop dead. Because what linear does in keyframe language is it will just stop your transition dead and not feel natural. So I wanted that natural, like it's continuing. So by adding a bezier, it's almost like an arc uh, if you were to visualize it. So if the camera pushes in, it also pushes out a little bit. Or if you move the camera down, it will also continue it a little bit before it comes back to where it's supposed to. So it's a nice gradual kind of bounce around. And that is how we create kind of the wave uh, kind of motion rather than it being like eh, 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 linear. We were able to create just a free Bezier's probably. I think it is, we'll look in a minute. And that allowed us to create a nice S shape. So I've used a mixture of, what is that one? Auto Bezier, Bezier, continuous Bezier. Basically I was messing around. I don't know keyframes that well. I need to learn a lot more about keyframes because this part took me hours just to get something I was happy with. Definitely need to explore more into Bezier's because, uh, well, keyframes, because it's it's a lot of trial and error I found. Let's have a look at another part of the film. So here you can see, to get out of the animation, we did a, a whip pang, and that is again, if we look at the effects, right here you can see, we got transform on, and that is, it all happens within four keyframes. And at the same time behind, as you'll see down here in the layers, that one is also doing a whip pan coming in. So it's a nice ka-chung, 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 ka -chung effect. It's not a seamless transition, but it definitely is a cool way of getting from one shot to another. And because the backgrounds are both yellow, it worked really well. I did it again here at the end of that clip, which went into the rotation of the chief can. So in order to do this, I basically just turned the power off on the lazy Susan that was spinning the can around. And then when the power's off, I stopped recording the film and took a photograph. And that is how we get the photograph to be in the same location of uh, the film. And uh, again, if we punch, we, you can do obviously scale with the transform tool as well. So here, you'll see that as well as my position moving, because I wanted to keep the eye line the same as the photograph, it's also punching in the scale. It goes from 100% all the way to 168% and that is the scale that matched the next shot and again we had Bezier's going on so once it had zoomed in it did like a little punch back out a little bit again just to make just to soften the blow and at the same time I thought it'd be quite cool to <coughs> close the eyes and animate the mouth a little bit it's very very simple it's just Again, you see, it's just two different Photoshop layers turning on and off. Um, very, very basic animation. And it was effective enough. I would like to have done a lot more and maybe even had the chief's mouth moving and talking rather than just a voiceover. But that's for, yeah, a little blink. That's for another video, maybe. And then there, a sound effect happens where I go, run, and I kind of almost wanted that to be like, he's kind of grimacing. He's closing his eyes now, like, oh no, I'm being picked up. Because he closes his eyes, it zooms in. And then it's a transition into what I like to call the fast part of the advert now. So the storytelling part is out of the way. But now it's time for the main, you know, your regular Daniel Schiffer style film. Obviously, I was using my computer screen as the background, which you you may have noticed in the uh, the film as I did the breakdown there. To me, good technique. Got a new screen now. Not sure if it's going to work as the same. 
although it will be less reflective because the iMac is glass, whereas this is a matte finish, so it might be better than, than, than the iMac. Bigger screen as well. Yeah, the fast action happens. As you can see, my my story flows quite well in the fact that if you're going to pull the ring can maybe show it in two different scenes. So you've got out of context scene, the kind of the real world goes straight back into kind of the graphic yellow background world. This can explosion probably goes against a lot of what the beer company would want to strive for for their advertising, but I basically had one take to get it right. I had two cans. The first take was terrible. Did I have, do I have the footage? We could have a look, couldn't we? Let's have a look, see if we've got the footage. Also, it was really hard to get it focused and film yourself, so I had to get my wife over just to hit record. Because, uh, yeah. I only had, like I said, one take. Is this the one? It almost looks like the right one. Let's just play it through slowly. All of this was filmed at 60 frames in 4K, so I could slow it down to 24 frames, which allows us to have this slow-mo once it's transcoded. Nope, it looks like I backed out of that one. Let's go for the next clip. So as you can see, that is the part that I used because I've got my markers, my in and out point. And amazingly, we got away with that. Did you see that? I actually pulled it and slipped and it opened it slightly. Just there. Actually, that isn't, is that the wrong one? Yeah. Is it? Hard to tell. Go. Could be the right one. But look at the mess I make. Terrible. <laughs> ah, no. That must have been the first take. Wasn't happy with that. So why wasn't I happy? Let's have a look again. I think the can left the shot too quickly. I'm not even drinking. And much too much beer foam all over the can. So the one that actually was good. No. No. I stand corrected. I used the bad one. And I must have just cut it at the right time. Let's go through it slowly. I must have just cut it. If we lift this clip up, extend it, I'm guessing we'll see that this, yeah, this is the bad one. Huh. Just goes to show, in editing, your one that you thought was better sometimes isn't. Okay, what else? So then your generic, pouring the drink. I've had some comments saying that my beer glasses are not beer glasses, and I know. Um, maybe for the next one I will do something like getting the proper glasses. But it's the best I can get in the supermarket last minute. Um, I thought this was quite cool because the yellow background allowed you to see some real nice lighting for, for the beer and all these swirls going on. I mean, all of that is just filmed. It's one shot, but it looks like I've done a close up as well, but it's not. As you'll see, it's just, <clears throat> you just zoom in. Always keeping the horizon base on the same plane, because otherwise, it would be crap. Um, and then this was just the next part of that.
Yeah, we're starting, as you can see on the transform, we're already 212% zoomed in, whereas that one, that started at 100, and it went up to, come on, 125, then we kicked in two straight away, 212, And then what happens here? I guess the fast transition. Yeah. Zooms back out to 100%. See, that's the power of the transform tool. It's very, very processor heavy and be prepared for some computer fan noise and some struggling and playback stuttering. But Unless you're editing in After Effects, where you already have the automatic motion blur button. I'm not sure how you get around that. There, I don't know why there isn't that button in Premiere. It'd be so much more helpful. And then, as you can see, a little bit of a cock up. I think something happened. I wasn't happy or something with this end shot. Um, it was, It was good, obviously. But something must have happened in the end, sh end shot, and I had to refill the glass. And then I think my tea was ready. And I put that glass in the fridge. And then you'll see the clarity between that glass, where you can see through, and now this glass that's been in the fridge. Hmm. I tried cleaning it. It didn't work. It was still had too much condensation on it from being cold in the fridge. So that's a lesson learned for sure. So there we're... You can see, got us. If we open that up, we've got our speed. So the lazy Susan, it spins at one rotation in 60 seconds. So it's automatically too slow. So my starting speed here is 350%. And then here, I whack it up to 4000% just to get the can round to where I want. And there, that is where we hit the power button. Hit the power button! To stop it dead. As you can see, the G is a little bit too far right on Ghost, and the E is a bit too close to the right on uh, the dance. So it's not dead central, but it's bloody close. And again, I had like one take to get that right. And then this is two layers because I had to high one yeah um oh yeah i didn't want my hand reflection on the can i think that was what it was going on so we masked out just the hand part and then if i was to play that bit without that other layer Oh, that's just a static. But basically, when my hand came in to get the glass, let's just see, actually. If we disable... the mask... Let's just completely delete it for now. Let's see what happens. Oh, no. What happens is... Because it's on the Lazy Susan that's rotating, just the slightest movement of me touching the glass made the can rotate a little bit, as you'll see here. See that? There. So that's not professional. That is why the mask was there. So there we go. And then annoying to get the font I don't know what the font was couldn't find flat artwork anywhere I had to take photos of the can rotating so I could get a close enough good perspective letter on a curve and then put that into Illustrator turn it into the logo and then we got ghost dance and then as a finishing touch just found some free downloadable 
fire sparks. Not necessarily needed. But they kind of added a little bit to the end shot. And that is it. I don't know if I even really went through it enough. Basically, I use a lot of the transform effect, a lot of keyframes. If I were to, yeah, because if we were to play back, uh, let's just take a shot, for example, because even that shot, for example, it's got, it's got a, a scale happening going from 100 to 104. It's also got it punched in on the transform. So if we take off all of that and we take all of that, that was the shot. Put it back on. And that is the crop we end up with. We play it like that. See, it's a bit boring, isn't it? Without the action. That's why with most of my shots, I add a little bit of a scale adjustment. Put that one again. Hide that. Yeah. It hasn't got the drama, where as soon as you add the scale, it suddenly is a good build. Especially when you're combining a speed ramp on it. Because if you look at that, that's going from 400% down to 100% in already slow motion. So filling up and boom, which worked really well for kind of like this cloud build up in the glass. Yeah, happy with those. Those came out great. That's it. Any questions, let me know down below. Did anyone spot also the little beer ad teaser I put on right at the beginning of the film? Uh, it was supposed to fool you as if like it was an advert put on there from YouTube and you were trying to click. Um, let's have a look. See, you got the uh, the mouse trying to quit, and they can't. It was just something to try and fool you, and I'm not sure if it did or didn't. But yeah, <coughs> I had fun at least thinking it might have caught you off guard. Anyway, that is it for this video. A lot of useful knowledge, I hope. I'm not even sure if I did give much <laughs> away. Basically, my biggest take home from this for anyone that wants to get more content like that. It's just to practice your keyframes. Literally, I'm using keyframes on pretty much every shot. Um, whether it's your standard keyframe, just a nice little, nice little slow zoom in. Learn what each of the modes do: Bezier, linear, easing in, easing out. It's uh, a lot to take in, but you'll see the results only by practicing yourself. Um, and then also explore that transform if you have Premiere. It's powerful, I'd say, and amazing. And it can create some really cool results. You know, just practice using them on some footage that you might already have. And you too can create cool content like this. If you think it's cool. Hopefully you liked it. Sorry it was so long. It didn't intend to be this long, but maybe there's some useful knowledge there. So I'm sorry it's long, but it's over now. So if you stuck around to the end, my God, thank you for that watch time. And uh, if you like it, why not like it? If you want to subscribe and follow me on this journey to becoming a YouTuber, then why not hit that subscribe button? I'll see you in the next video, and uh, bye for now. Join the dance. Release the fire inside under the moon and stars. Feel the flow in your veins. The ghost that shall reunite the living and the dead to bring peace, prosperity, and unity to Kindle Contribes. Uh -huh.